Uh, good, morning. good morning. Well, uh, my name is Rayman Mwangosi. I'm working with World Vision Tanzania as Health and Nutrition Program Officer. And I will be presenting on behalf of Dr. Irene, so I'm not Dr. Irene. <coughs> so, uh, our presentation is on uh, multisectoral involvement in nutrition. Multisectoral involvement in nutrition with focus on realization on sustainable development goal. Uh, first of all, I will start with the nutrition during the first thousand days. What is it and why first thousand days? So, first thousand days is, uh, uh, we start counting these days from the day of conception through the second birthday of the child. Uh, this offer a unique window of opportunity to shape the healthier and more uh, prosperous future for the child. The right nutrition during this uh, window of opportunity have profound impact on child ability to grow, learn, and rise out of poverty. Uh, it can also shape the society long-term health, stability, and prosperity. Adequate nutrition during this uh, window of opportunity means uh, less wasting and stunting, as well as less uh, mobility and mortality. It also lowers the risk of non-communicable diseases, such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, uh, in later life. Um, some evidence from Lancet series on uh, child survival on 2003 and child development in 2007, uh, child and maternal undernutrition 2008, maternal and child undernutrition 2013, studies on impact of alienization of breastfeeding to reduce uh, neonatal mortality, uh, initiation of breastfeeding means uh, starting breastfeeding within one hour after delivery. Some of the key messages are portrayed on this uh, uh, on this report uh, include the importance of nutrition and infant young child feeding for children's survival, growth, and development. Negative impact of uh, nutrition deficiency is particularly prominent during uh, the period of infants and the first two years of life. This uh, we call a critical window of opportunity during the first thousand days. So ensuring optimal infant young child feeding with integrated comprehensive program has crucial role in child survival, growth, as well as development. So some of the effects due to suboptimal nutrition and care during the first southern days include stunting. And stunting has uh, some effect including but not limited to um, suboptimal cognitive development such as a lower intelligent conscience, school achievement, as well as dropout. Some studies show more problems uh, with conduct, poor attention and poor social relationship at school age. Therefore, reduction of stunting is one of the main strategies to achieve optimal development worldwide. Other strategies include adequate simulation, uh, prevent, prevention of iodine deficiency. As we know, iodine is also crucial for uh, cognitive development. Prevention of, deficiency, uh, of iron deficiency anemia as well. Um, 
We have the conceptual framework, which shows the, some of the interventions, uh, which are nutrition specific interventions and nutrition uh, sensitive interventions, as well as uh, the enabling environment. So uh, you can see the interventions on the nutrition specific that will uh, that will bring impact on breastfeeding, uh, nutrient rich food, and eating. Well. Although the, these interventions from the uh, nutrition specific interventions and nutrition sensitive interventions as well as the uh, enabling environment will, uh, bring, uh, will bring about the lowering mobility and mortality in childhood, uh, increased cognitive motor social emotion development and Rise school performance and learning capacity uh, will lead to attain adult stature, reduce obesity and non-communicable diseases, and increase wealth capacity and productivity. Uh, there are some some interventions shown showing the percentage of total under five death prevented by those interventions. So the first bar is it shown, it show ex, uh, the interventions on exclusive breastfeeding and the continued breastfeeding from six to 11 months, which are, uh, reduced up to 13. And another is uh, insecticide treated materials. These are uh, like insecticide treated nets. We have the complementary feeding with the continued breast milk. We have the intervention of zinc, and intervention of uh, hepatitis B vaccine, uh, clean water, water sanitation and hygiene, and the last bar on the interventions on uh, anti uh, antenatal steroids. So, from the Global Nutrition Report, it has shown that Africa economic progress is being undermined by hunger, malnutrition, and stunting, which cost at least 25 billion US dollars in sub Saharan Africa and leave a last legacy of loss, pain, ruined potential, stunts, and ruined potential. Stunted children today lead, lead to stunted economic tomorrow. The Global Nutrition Report help us to allow, help us all to maintain and focus on and deal with the whole preventable African tragedy. This is according to the uh, ADB, ADB president. Again, the Global Nutrition Report argue on behalf of more than half the world's population with more than a third of the people living this planet overweight and obese. Of a staggering period and half suffering from anemia and other micronutrient deficiencies. This report also reveals uh, some uh, reveals five areas that cut across the sustainable development goal, which nutrition can contribute and benefit from them. So the first area is sustainable food production that cut across goal number two, goal number thirteen, goal number fourteen, and goal number fifteen. So, 
In this area, agriculture yield will decrease as temperature rise by more than three, three stations. More carbon dioxide will mean less protein, iron, zinc, and other micronutrient content in major crops consumed by much of the world. So the link with nutrition is that more sustainable diet would make significant difference to climate change, biodiversity, and our water. Food production uses 70% of the world's fresh water supply. Agriculture produces about 20% of all greenhouse gas emissions, and livestock uses 70% of the agriculture land. A second area is system infrastructure that cut across goal number six, goal number seven, number eight, number nine, 11 and 12. Infrastructure like roads, sanitation and electricity is needed to deliver food, water and energy more equitable. This includes cities. The world's urban population will reach up to 66% by 2050 yet deprived areas underserved, while infrastructure has made it easier to deliver food that increase the risk of obesity. The link is improved nutrition support, grey matter uh, infrastructures, help people with knowledge, uh, uh, with the knowledge, ability and energy to drive economic development and build the, uh, the future. Good nutrition gives people more labor and mental capacity offering uh, $16, uh, $16 return for every $1 invested. Another area is health system strengthening. Uh, a well-functioning health system is vital to deliver preventive interventions at scale to prevent and treat undernutrition, particularly in young children uh, and mothers, and to tackle the diet-related non-communicable diseases as well as obesity. And the link is undernutrition leads to 45% of all under five deaths. Uh, improved nutrition reduces sickness and lower uh, mortality rates and so reduce the burden of health system, on health system. Another one is uh, equity and inclusion that cut across goal number one, number four, number five, number eight, and number ten. Education is associated with improved nutrition outcomes. Mothers who have had quality secondary education are likely to have significant better knowledge of children. Nutrition is linked to GDP growth, a 10% rise in income translates into 7.4% fall in wasting. The link is uh, well nourished children, 33% more likely to escape poverty. Improved nutrition means better outcome in education, employment, and female empowerment as well as reduce poverty and inequality. Another one is peace and stability. The proportion of undernutrition people uh, living in countries in conflict and protracted crisis is almost three times higher than that in other developing countries. Malnutrition will not end without peace and stability. So the link is uh, investing in food security and the fair distribution of natural resources is critical for both nutrition, resilience, and reduced fragility. And the last one, but not the least, uh, is partnership for the goal that, uh, that cut across goal number 17. Uh, strengthening implementation across the goal through partnership capacity, data accountability, financing and coherence will be a key to end malnutrition in all its form. So the link is improving coherence on nutrition from commitment to policy and implementation will help to build an 
enabling environment for all sustainable development goals. So in summary, it is important for maternal, uh, it is maternal and infant and young child adolescent nutrition is very important for shaping the life of our children in the future. And tackling the root cause of malnutrition requires that we tackle the, the causes at the individual, household and community level through provision of nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive interventions in tandem with the enabling environment. The link between nutrition and sustainable development goal can be overemphasized. Um, having said all this, I would like to welcome my colleague, Madam Grace, from the Ministry of Health, and she will be talking on the uh, trend of nutrition in Tanzania and the national multisectoral nutrition approach. Welcome, Madam Grace. As you can tell, I'm not Grace, right? <laughs> uh, Grace is with the Ministry of Health. Uh, she's the Assistant Director for Nutrition Services in the sector for uh, Prevent Directorate of uh, Preventative uh, Health Services. Uh, her presentation revolves around the same thing, but this is now, uh, she's providing a highlight of exactly what the status is in country and how the Ministry of uh, Health is prioritizing uh, nutrition. So over to you, thank you. A round of applause. Yeah, good morning everybody. Good morning. Yeah, I'm Grace Moshi from minist the Ministry Responsible for Health, Community Development, Gender, Elderly and Children. Eh? Yeah, I'm going to present in a, in a nutshell on the multi-sector issue in Tanzania. And in my presentation will focus on a nutrition situation. I'll focus on three things. Nutrition situation, government initiatives to improve nutrition, and I'll talk a little bit on the National Multi-Sector Nutrition Action Plan. Probably uh, for the case of wasting, or uh, in another name we call global acute malnutrition, it is we the prevalence is less than five percent. In in that case, we have attained the world well, well the healthy assembly commitment or target. Yeah, and but when you you look at the absolute number. We have over 4,050 four, four, four children who are suffering from acute severe malnutri acute malnutrition, and the, among those, uh, one, one, one thousand and two, one, one, one hundred and two thousand 
are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. So you can see the we have got we are we still have the high number of children with severe acute malnutrition. For the case of stunting, when you look at the region, the national prevalence is 34.4, but when you look at the region, yeah, when you look at the region, you can see those regions with dark color are the one with, with higher prevalence of stunting. When you see, you can see regions like Rukwa, Jombe, Ruvuma, Iringa, Kagera, and Geita are, the, are among the regions with high prevalence of stunting. So you can see there with the red color. And in, in the case of uh, stunting in regions, about 16 out of 31 regions with the stunting, they have higher prevalence than the national coverage or national prevalence which is the 34.4. About the nutritional situation among women of reproductive age, yeah, the, the nutritional prevalence among women of reproductive age, yeah, when you, you look at the prevalence of overweight and obesity, it, it is increasing. From 1992 data, Tanzania demographic health survey data, you can see the prevalence is increasing. And the, up to 2015, it is around 37%. So you can see we are, we are, we are going in a higher speed. For the case of uh, micronutrient deficiencies, for anemia, uh, for under five, for under five, six to fifty-nine months, children it is fifty-eight percent, and the anemia among women of reproductive age prevalence is forty-five percent. So you can begin. you can see anemia is still high, and for the case of vitamin A deficiency, for the survey which was done in twenty ten, yeah, prevalence of vitamin A deficiency among uh, under five is thirty-three percent. And the, among women of reproductive age is 37%. On the salt iodization, still many of the households are not using iodated salt. You can see in Lindi and in Tuara, still the prevalence is still low. Now, I'll talk about the government initiatives. Yeah, government initiatives to improve nutrition. First of all, it's a political commitment. Government has been co committed to improve nutrition. The government has increased in, in resource allocation for nutrition, financial resources. It has been established a budget line for nutrition, which was not there in previous years. Again, the government has increase the human resource for nutrition. We are from Minister of Health. We have a scheme of service for nutrition officers who are working in the health sector from the region up to the councils. Again, the government has been involved in, in, in scaling up nutrition movements and the, our former president of, the, of Tanzania was the, an ambassador. He was a chair for those countries who were involved in scaling up movement, scaling up movement, or scaling up nutrition movement. So from there is when we start to, to engage as a country in multi-sectoral nutrition approach. Again, the government and the partners have been committed to scale up evidence-based based high impact nutrition interventions. As my previous uh, presenter was talking on those interventions, which have been proved by the Lancet of series that they are the ones which can, can provide quick, quick results. So
So the government has started to 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 to, to, to work on that. Again, the government has been engaged in uh, multi-sectoral collaboration. Yeah, through the Ministry of Health, we established the National Multisectoral Nutrition Action Plan. Yeah, this is the plan. Yeah, previous, in previous years, we were not working together as uh, those ministries, but now we develop one plan which we all implement nutrition activities through this plan. And the plan was, uh, was established to, to address the uh, unacceptably high level of malnutrition in all forms, as you see there. And uh, the developed the plan, yeah, in short form, we call it MNAP. And the plan specify expected results in key result areas. I will talk on, on it later. And the, the plan uh, defines key strategies that will be used to reach the expected result. And the plan has activities and the, even ex expected co ex estimated cost. And the, the MNAP guides implementation of nutrition activities by ministerial development agencies, regional secretaries, and local government authority. And also it, it guides the coordination of nutrition activities, nutrition responses, and the guiding monitoring and evaluation, as well as a resource mobilization at all levels. Yeah, now I'll talk a little bit on the approach, approaches we used to prepare the plan. During the preparation of the plan, we, we, we were having the lead facilitator and the, the secretary as well, uh, and the chair. And the, all the process of the development of the plan were overseen by the prime minister's office. Yeah, and the, and from the from the chair and secretariat, we were having the facilitators for those key results areas, which were seven key results areas. We were having the facilitator for Mikan, micronutrient, imam, uh, dietary related non communicable diseases, as well as uh, the but central nutrition information system. So we were having the chairs who were communicating and, and again, on the approaches we used to prepare, we involved different stakeholders and the one who were involved were the, those sector ministry, all, all ministries who are, who are implementing nutrition. For example, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Livestock, Minister of Health, Minister of Water, Minister of Education. So we involve all sectors. As well, we involve ministerial, de 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 ministerial de department agencies, like we involve Tanzania Food and Nutrition Center, is an, an agency from the Minister of Health. We involve uh, Tanzania Food and the Drug Authority, Medical Stores Department. Again, we involve our regional and the local government authority. We involve the donors, agencies. We involve civil society organizations and NGOs, both local and international NGOs, United Nations agencies like UNICEF, FAO. We, we also involve academia and the research. We involve private sector and individual nutrition stakeholders. And uh, during the development, we, we, we used the conceptual framework which we are developed, developed by the Lancet series on maternal and the child and the nutrition. 
And he, those MNAP key results areas, as I told you, uh, they are four, seven, I mean seven key results areas. And the four result key areas, number one up to four, they are dealing with nutrition specific interventions. Key results area number five is nutrition sensitive interventions. And the, the last two key result areas, number six and seven, and the enabling environment. And what are the uh, MNAP impact outcome and output? MNAP impact or desired change is to have children, adults, adolescents, women, and men in Tanzania who are better nourished, who can lead it to, and leading to health and more productive lives that, that contribute to economic growth and sustainable development. And in order to attain this uh, impact or desired change, all of the key, seven key priority areas should, should be, be, be involved in. Nine key impact results. The one, one of them is to reduce prevalence of stunting among children 0 to 59 months from, to reduce it from 34% to 28 percent by 2021 to reduce the prevalence of global acute malnutrition and to to, to be uh, to maintain the that under five to reduce prevalence of low birth weight from seven to five percent by 2021 to reduce prevalence of anemia among women of reproductive age from 45 to to 33 by 2021 to reduce prevalence of vitamin A from that of 33% among children under 5 to 26% to maintain, to maintain prevalence of diabetes among adults under 10 by 2021 and to maintain prevalence of overweight children uh, from Five percent. Yeah. Now the key strategies of the MNA. Yeah, key, uh, the MNA has ten key result strategies. Key strategies, which are, you can say, the uh, cross cutting. We have the social mobilized social and behavioral change communication strategy, advocacy and social mobilization, community centered capacity development, developing functional human resource capacity, aligning all uh, stakeholders with government policies, strategies, and plan, as well as uh, tracking process and the operation of research and development. Those are the and map key strategies. Now I'll talk a little bit on MNAP coordination system. And the MNAP, as I told you, is co coordinated through the Prime Minister's office. And the coordination mechanism is through the steering committee. We have the high level steering committee which has the which involves all key my line ministries and the chair of that committee is the prime is the permanent secretary from the prime minister's office and the all permanent secretaries from the those ministries all sectors they are the members apart from my permanent secretary the permanent secretaries as well, the, the UN, UN agencies, donors, and the civil society organizations are the members, as well as the business networks. Yeah, from, the, uh, from the national level, we have the MNAP main technical working group. Uh, that working group has been divided into eight thematic areas. 
You can see we have the maternal infant and young, the infant young child and adolescent nutrition. The bacteria we have micronutrient, the bacteria and obesity, management of acute malnutrition, the bacteria. We have uh, the bacteria which is dealing with prevention and management of better related non communicable diseases. The thematic areas which is dealing with nutrition sensitive interventions, multisectoral nutritional government, governance, multisectoral information system, and resource mobilization. So all of those thematic areas are, are working with that MMAP technical working group. At the, at the RIS and the NGO level, we have the Council Steering Committee. Again, from that committee, the chair is uh, those the executive directors, district or council executive directors, and the members are those departments which are working on nutrition, and also those uh, NGOs, international and local, who are working on that those localities are the members of the steering committee. Is that the last slide? Not the last slide. On the issue of uh, monitoring and evaluation of that scheme map, we have got uh, the bottleneck analysis. We normally conduct bottleneck analysis for uh, semi-annual and the annual. And uh, we conduct joint multisectoral nutritional review annually. Uh, public expenditure review on nutrition periodically in every after five years. And the, again, we, at, at the need of the implementation of MLA, we will do the detailed review. And the, we have got two surveys the Tanzania National Nutrition Survey and the Tanzania Demographic Health Survey. For Tanzania uh, National Nutritional Survey, we expect to, to, to conduct the survey this year, at the end of the year, and we are the preparatory. We are preparing the, the, for the survey. But for the Tanzania Demographic Health Survey, the survey will be conducted after five years from the last survey, which was in 2015-16. Yeah, in conclusion, in conclusion, MLAP is used as a dynamic strategic guide and MLAP is a tool that guides all key players in nutrition in the country. It guides for the resource mobilization for nutrition, both domestic and external resources, planning and the execution of nutrition interventions by all LGAs, MDA, CSUs, and private company, private private sector, and through uh, and in the plan has put in place a clear, transparent, and a regular tracking system for budget allocation and expenditure to all stakeholders. What I can say is that together we can eliminate malnutrition in Tanzania through multisectoral collaboration. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Uh, thank you, Raymond. We'll just entertain a few questions. That's one. If you could go for it. My name is Sabine Winkler. I'm coming from the SC Congo. And I thank you for the good presentation to get more uh, information how the government has taken now the matter of nutrition <coughs> in the country and to put it in their plan and inside the activities. My question is about uh, feeding in the schools. Because I know in many schools, children start in the morning without getting any food at home. So they come to the schools 
and they sit and you know the concentration goes down, they start sleeping and um, my question is if there is a program to look to the schools, especially day schools or boarding schools, how is the school meal there, how they are helping to, to feed the children in the schools. Thank you. Yes, sir. I am very much impressed with the effort of the government, especially in increasing human resources for nutrition. And especially, I was very happy to learn about the, the endocrination system, which seems to be very good. This is my question. At the district level, we have the specialist or personnel responsible for nutrition. Is there any way we can take it down to the world so that we can have, at the world level, we can have what we call Mama Lishi, I mean, uh, Officer Lishi, or Bana Lishi at the world level? Because this is very good, but it is up there. And is there any way that can bring it down to the community? Thank you. What I'm curious about is, um, if you come to the African society, where we find ourselves, religion plays a very important role. And the question I ask is, um, the two, 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 two uh, actors I don't see there, the religious leaders, as well as the community leaders. Because whatever we discuss at the uh, institutional level, we actually intend to carry this out in communities, in different households. So is there a way that they are being integrated? Maybe it's not shown in this chart, but that happens. And if not so, uh, do you think that it's possible to actually get these two actors onto uh, the chart that you just showed us? The issues of school feeding, eh? Yeah. Yeah, uh, from the country we have got those school feeding programs, but we are still improving them. And the, as a government, we normally work with uh, partners and stakeholders. And the, we have a lot of stakeholders who are working on that area. For instance, I, I, I hear somebody from PCI here. Yeah, they are doing a lot of interventions on school feeding. Yeah, as a government, we are, we are working on that, but something is still missing. So we are calling upon, the, the, upon you partners who are working on that to support the government on the issues. Because we all know the importance of school feeding. And the, in the previous years, even the, the communities or the people from the locality were contributing themselves to make sure that their uh, children get food. But uh, it's still a challenge. So we, as a government, we are calling upon you partners to support that component. Yeah, for the... Yeah, somebody asked about the issue of nutrition at the world level. Eh? Yeah. We are still, again, we are still working on that. And as I told you, uh, we, we established the scheme of services, scheme of service for nutrition officers at the Ministry of Health. And that scheme of service also has got the, that levels, uh, the, commun the community level. But the, we, we still don't have the human resource for uh, many nutritionists in the in diploma level. So the ministry is working on that. Maybe in the coming years, we will have those people up to the world level. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I can correct you. Yeah, the, the colleges which are pro providing nutrition officers is not only at Sokoine. We have got University of Dodoma. Now, this year, they are going to start the nutrition course, Open University of Tanzania. We have got, even in Arusha, we have the college, the university. Nelson Mandela is providing graduates for nutrition. As I told you, we are still working on the issue of having lower cadres. Yeah. 
about the um, involving uh, those who are doing in local food the government is encouraging on that so i would like to tell you that keep on doing researches and uh, when you come up with the the that uh, maybe results and so government is will take that initiative and uh, incorporate it in 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 government systems so don't worry about that and that's why i'm here yeah because it's one of the it's the, it's the one of the area which we are supporting that's why we are we are trying to 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 do multi sector approach so that to make sure that everybody is involved in in dealing with the stunting stunting is not only even even the lancet seals explained much on stunting and stunting is not only availability of food food can be available but maybe if care child care practices is not done well uh, the child could end up of being stunted or if maybe wash initiatives are not taken care kids could end up of getting stunted that's why is the government we started to involve all sectors which are dealing with nutrition issues